This video is about what international students need to know about passing the GED test. I'm going to talk about how this test is different. If you are outside of the United States, I'm going to talk about how it's the same. And at the end, I'll have a couple tips on what you can do to make sure you have a better chance of passing. If you are watching this video from the United States and plan to take the test in the United States, you can probably set this one out. All right, so the first thing you need to know is that the GED is not just for Americans. It is mostly for Americans, yes, uh, but it is for anyone. The test is offered in over 90 countries, according to the GED, and there are lots of universities all over the world that will accept a GED if you apply to them. So I will have a link in the description that will show you just all the different places all over the world um, that offer this test. The one reason that I wanted to make this video was because I noticed in the YouTube demographics where they break down like all the different people who are watching your videos, I saw that like most of them were from the United States, about three quarters, but that means a quarter of them were coming from somewhere else. So um, I see you, my Thai brothers and sisters, uh, my South African and Bangladeshi friends. Um, you're here trying to get this thing done, watching these videos. Hi. Good luck. Try to help. All right, so the first thing to know is that a lot of this test is the same. It starts in the same place, no matter where you are. You have to sign up for an account on GED.com. You can't get a GED if you don't do that. It is the same test. Uh, you will take outside of the United States or inside of the United States. There's a little asterisk there because that's like mostly true. There's one country that doesn't follow those rules, and that country is Canada. Uh, this video won't be about the Canadian GED, but just know that... Um, the Canadian GED is like the 2002 version of the American GED. They just kind of like st stuck with it. And it's similar, but it's not the same. Um, they have a different calculator that you can use. Anyway, Canada does things a little differently. But everyone else, it's just like the United States test. Um, the way to prepare for it is the same. You can go to GED.com, put in your address, and see if there are local classes. Uh, that, that's something that's offered all over the world. Um, you can take online classes that are offered from the GED itself or maybe from uh, some other way. You can watch these YouTube videos. Anything that will prepare you for the American version of the test will also prepare you for the international version because it's the same version. Um, you will also end up testing at a testing center, which is what most but not all Americans do. Uh, there'll also be a link in the description to show you where the testing centers are. All right, it's not all the same. There are some important differences between the American version and the non-American version. Unfortunately, the first one is that it's like twice as expensive if you are outside of the United States. It's like 80 bucks a test, so like 320 bucks for the whole thing, and that's in U.S. dollars. Um, that's a bummer. I'm sorry. Uh, also, you can't take this test online. That was just introduced during COVID in the United States, and hopefully maybe one day it'll be offered anywhere. I don't know what... The holdup is. I don't know why they won't offer it to someone in another country outside of the United States, but they don't. Um, sorry about that. Um, and there are a bunch of country-specific rules, and I'll have a link in the description so you can look up your own country to see if they have any funny rules about taking the test. Like, for example, Bangladesh requires you to take a GED class before you can even attempt to take the test. So, you know, heads up. Uh, there are a few more differences. They're getting sort of like less and less important. Um, one is that this test is only offered in English. You'll see that little Canadian asterisk there. But if you were hoping um, that there would be a Thai version or a, um, I don't know, Vietnamese version, other versions in other languages, there isn't. That little asterisk means that um, in Canada, uh, you can take the test in Spanish or English in some provinces or in French or English in some other provinces. Um, but that's it. Everyone else has to take the English version. If you need an apostille, which is a word I just learned today and hope I am pronouncing correctly. I did look it up. Um, that's something international folks might need. You can email the GED at help at GED.com. I'll have that also in the description. An apostille is like a certificate of authenticity that shows the government agency or the university or whatever that the GED you have is legit uh, and authentic. Um, 
You can also watch my last video about getting fake GEDs if you want to know how not to get a fake GED. Anyway, uh, finally, the degree you will get when you finish is called the District of Columbia High School Equivalency Diploma. Totally not important, but is different. So it's on this list. All right, I have two tips. One of them I think is good, and the other one is pretty general, but not terrible. The first one is that um, the social studies test might prove more difficult for you as an international student than it would for an American because it's focused on American government and American history and American geography. So if you are in Ghana, all that you've learned about Ghanaian history um, won't help you on this test unless there's some sort of overlap between the United States and Ghanaian history. I, nothing comes to mind, but um, at least nothing that would be on the GED test. So uh, I'm going to put a link for some uh, US-centric playlist so you can bone up on your American history and government and geography. You don't need to know this stuff. It's not like essential that you know all about America because it's a reading test and they'll give you most of the information that you need in the reading itself. But it definitely will help. It will sort of feel like trying to navigate a room with the lights off versus the lights on. It just makes it easier if you know where things are. Um, there's also lots of websites and books you can read about American history if that proves to be a challenge for you. All right, finally, um, and kind of obviously, this test only is offered in English, and if English isn't your first language, um, you might want to focus just on the language itself. Uh, unfortunately, if you are a Spanish person from Spain and you want to take the test in Spanish, you would have to fly to the United States or certain Canadian provinces to do it. Um, you can't just take the Spanish test in Spain. And so if your first language isn't English or you just want to improve it, it's a good idea. Um, I'm trying every day to improve my own English. And you can tell by listening to this video that I still have a ways to go. All right. Um, all the regular tips that I have, uh, all the other videos I've made, they're all good. Anything you do to prepare for the American version will help you with the international version because it is the American version, Canada accepted. Um, so join a Facebook group, watch all the videos, get a book, take the classes, do all that stuff. It will help you. All right, if you have any questions specific to your own country, uh, or in general, that I didn't answer in this video, please ask them in the comments. I will do my best to answer. I know I'm not super great about responding to people's comments, but this time I will be different. Um, and finally, the best piece of advice I can give you in general, always and forever, is to like my videos and subscribe to them. Thanks for watching.